Welcome back to this week's Coach's Corner. A lot to cover since we last talked. We cleared out the year with a successful road trip to NDSU and Cal Poly. Uh, we dueled NDSU on Friday, had a nice ranked win there, took off on Saturday, flew to Cal Poly on our way there. We ran into a storm. We actually were coming down into Cal Poly to land and we had to divert on our plane and take off and go to Cal State Bakersfield, which was kind of wild. Um, we we're fortunate to, to land there and uh, made a call to alumni, uh, Coach Steve Blyes, who now coaches at Cal State Bakersfield. And we got off the plane and were able to work out in their resting room, then take off, drive to Cal Poly and duel them the following morning where our guys wrestled pretty well, picked up another ranked win. So we ended up having a short Christmas break. We had our guys come back on December 26th to start training as we took off for the Southern Scuffle. We brought 20 guys down there to compete. 10 of them placed. I thought overall we wrestled pretty well. Um, we had the opportunity to see some good competition, see some different opponents, which is the main thing we we're looking for. When the Big Ten schedule came out and we realized we had Northwestern, it was a really short turnaround. I think it had a small impact on um, some of our guys in that duel, but uh, we came back, had a couple days off and took off and flew to Northwestern. We dueled them this past weekend. We ended up dropping that duel. Um, I think the big difference in some of the duels that we won this year, looking at our big wins over Oklahoma State and the other ranked wins, we were closing out a lot of the matches. We were riding very well and we were winning all the close ones. And this duel, unfortunately, didn't go that way. We lost a lot of close ones and, and that was the difference maker in that duel. Um, starting off yeah, at 125 pounds, there was not a match. Um, we were not aware that D.R. Estina was not going to wrestle and McKee, who's done a great job making weight this year, um, did not make weight and so it was unfortunate. Um, based on Big Ten travel regulations, we can only travel with 13 guys um, on the road and, and three extra guys was not enough. We were not able to bring Spratley. Um, he got injured in the Southern Scuffle. It's not serious, he'll be back, but he wasn't able to compete in that duel, so we left him home. McKee did not make weight, so we didn't have the ability to have a fill-in on such short notice. But again, it's just, you know, one of those Big Ten rules, but three guys to cover 10 weights based on things that can happen with illnesses and injuries and all those things. It's just kind of a tough thing to manage, as you guess, before you take off on the road. Um, but there's no match at 125. 133, Aaron Nagao continues to wrestle extremely well. Um, the guy that he wrestles is ranked anywhere between, I think, 8th in the country and 11th in the country. And if you had a chance to watch the match, you would see Aaron really dominated. I thought wrestled extremely well. There's one small moment at the very end of the second period where the guy's on the edge and on a single and locks up a cradle and rolls and gets a four near fall and the takedown there at the very last seconds of the second period. Other than that, um, Aaron really dominated um, a couple um, situations where he was scoring a takedown that the ref stopped for potential dangerous one time putting the Northwestern kid to his back. It was unfortunate, but that's the way that match went. But overall, I think he's doing really well and he's going to continue to learn. Berglund um, had a tough matchup. He's um, lost a very close match. I think for him, he's doing extremely well on top. He's riding tough. People are, are really, I think, having to make a decision if they want to go under him or not. But he just did not give himself enough, enough opportunities early to score the points he needed to to secure that win. So we lo dropped a clo lost a close one there as well. At 149, Blockus is competing against the number fifth ranked guy in the country. That goes to overtime. Blockus rode him really well during the regulation part of the match, but in overtime, um, he was he was not able to get away and not able to score a takedown. So we lost in uh, the double overtime there. So at 157, Brayton Lee is still coming back. We have a lot of faith in him. Still coming back from that injury. I think there's a lot of things he's still trying to iron out to get back to where he is. Um, we know he's going to get to where he needs to be, but he just got to continue to battle and, and build. But he dropped a match against uh, what I think is a really good opponent as well there. 165, um, Sparks drops that match. Um, was not a best match by Sparks, no doubt about it. He did not look like he had high energy, uh, the high energy that he typically has, and he was wrestled uh, fairly flat. 174 and 184, both Bailey and Salazar get um, bonus wins for us, and they look phenomenal. It was great to see those guys come out and lead that way. Um, Salazar, especially not going to the scuffle and coming in, was really exciting to watch him wrestle, and uh, he scored. 
I think a, a 14 point victory, nearly got a tech fall there, but he wrestled extremely well. Um, Foy moving up to 197, continues to get bigger. Got to give credit to Scott um, McWilliams, who's doing a really good job, our strength coach, putting weight on him. He's weighing about 200 pounds now. He was wrestling 184 pounds for us earlier in the year. So we've seen some really good progress there. And he picks up a ranked win at 197. And then Garrett Joel's going up to heavyweight, has done a really good job. He was wrestling against, I think, the number four ranked guy in the country. It was a 3-2 match. And uh, just a uh, really great effort for him. So we're, we're impressed with uh, Garrett, the way that he continues to build. And he's going to kind of have to figure this system out. He's wrestling some of these bigger guys, but now he's getting his weight up. He's near nearing 220 pounds, and, and um, he's doing a really good job there. Some of you guys maybe have heard, um, it's unlikely that Gable Stevenson will be back wrestling. So that's, uh, I know, something that a lot of people are, are bummed about, but we're really excited that Garrett was able to take that, that opportunity and say, I'll do this for the team and I'll move up and, and do a really good job of it. Uh, looking forward to this next week. We've got a big weekend ahead of us. This Friday, we take off. We go to Nebraska. We wrestle them on Friday. There's eight ranked matchups, some really uh, tough matchups that will be great for our guys' chances to beat some of the top guys. And that's a duel we're looking forward to. We'll come back on Saturday to a home duel here on Sunday versus Michigan State. The highlight match and the Michigan State duel here at home will be at the 133 pound, which will be a rematch between Nagao and uh, um, their guy at um, the Southern Scuffle from last year. So it'll be a great opportunity for Nagao. Um, that duel's at 7 p.m. We're going to host our social at Blarney's at 3.30. So if you want to watch the Vikings game and get there prior to our duel, um, show up, um, spend that time watching the Vikings game with some fellow uh, Gopher wrestlers and, and, um, and then come to the duel afterwards. Alumni, please save the date and join us for our alumni duel on January 22nd versus Purdue at 1 p.m. Alumni will receive one complimentary ticket and the ability to purchase additional tickets at $5 each. We plan to do a group picture on the mat at the halftime, so if you can make it, please join us. For RSVP for this event, email Cody at the email below.